perfectly competitive firm. It's got a perfectly elastic demand curve. Remember that? The demand curve is perfectly flat at the equilibrium price. Let's make it $6. And the challenge for the firm now is not to set the price that maximizes their profit. They can't change the price. The challenge is to find out what level of production will maximize the profits for the company. Our general rule is that profit maximization, I use pi for profit here, profit maximization occurs where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. You're going to want to remember that, that little rule forever. It explains your own behavior, by the way, more as we go along. In this case, we've got the marginal cost curve shown on the graph. You remember what marginal cost was, right? The cost of each additional unit. For example, if I'm producing 10 units, and I read up and I say, well, the 10th unit cost me $2.98. That's the marginal cost of that unit. And as I produce another unit, I read up, and well, what will I see? The marginal cost of the next unit increased slightly. And so on. As I continue production, the cost of each additional unit rises. That's marginal cost. If marginal cost is the cost of the next unit or an additional unit, the cost... What do you suppose the term marginal revenue means? It is the additional revenue for producing and selling one more unit. And in this example, every time they sell one more unit, how much more money do they get? They get the same amount, $6 every time. That the marginal revenue of unit number 10 is $6. And if they're out here at uh, unit number 95, and they sell that, how much do they get? Six dollars. Remember, they get the same price, the same extra revenue every time they sell one more unit. And so for that reason, when you see the horizontal demand curve, the perfectly elastic demand curve, that is also going to be the marginal revenue curve. Now, that's only true when the demand curve is flat. But it will be true for the firm in perfect competition. And so we're going to call this marginal analysis, looking at the marginal cost and the marginal revenue curve, and using that to determine how many units to produce to maximize our profit. Okay. Well, let's take a look at this. Should the company produce ten, unit number 10? And we say, well, if they did, it would cost them $2.98 to make it, but they would bring in $6. So they would bring in more than their marginal cost. Their marginal revenue would be more than their marginal cost for that unit. And what about unit number 11? We read up and we say, well, marginal cost here, marginal revenue here. Yeah, we should produce that. We'll make money on it. And this continues as you, as you move on out the production level. What's happening? The marginal cost is rising, but it's still not as high as the marginal revenue. You're not making as much money on each additional unit, but as long as the marginal revenue is higher than the marginal cost, you are making money, so keep producing and in fact, we'll find that you want to continue to produce all the way out to this point where marginal cost equals marginal revenue will tell us the profit maximizing level of output. And for grins, let's say that's 60 units. Okay? Now, what I'm going to tell you is that when you find that point where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue, and we'll be doing that on graphs from now on. I'm going to call that point alpha, because alpha is where everything begins. When we see these graphs and we're trying to determine the, the productivity, the profitability of the company, first thing we're going to look for is point alpha. And remember the litany here, okay? Find alpha, marginal cost intersect marginal revenue. Alpha tells us the quantity to produce. Alpha tells us quantity. Now, if we do this, what's happening with the 60th unit of production? It's going to have a marginal cost of 60 and a marginal, I'm sorry, of 6 and a marginal revenue of 6. Is the company going to make any profit on that unit when they produce that single unit, number 60? And the answer is yes, because why? Because when we use the term cost in economics, uh, within that term cost are both the explicit and implicit costs of production, and one of those implicit costs is a normal return or a normal or reasonable profit for the company. 
The accountants would say that you have a profit on this last unit. The economists will tell you, well, you're breaking even. You may have an accounting profit, but you're not having any economic profit. That sounds strange. Go back and reread your material on economic costs. Here's my next question, though. What happens if this company moves on and produces 61 units? When they produce unit number 61, and we read up, we'll see that the marginal revenue is less than the marginal cost. They're going to lose money on that unit, so they should not produce it. Neither should they produce anything beyond 61, because all the way out on this range of production, the cost of each unit is more than the revenue it generates. So their bottom line is, here's where you produce, point alpha. That's how many you should produce. Very quickly. What if they stop right here at unit number 10? If they stopped at unit number 10, and they didn't produce the rest of these units, do you see that this red shaded area represents profits they could have earned if they had moved on out to alpha? And so we say, if you stop below alpha output, you're going to have foregone profit because of underproduction. You produced too little. Foregone profit. Okay, so far? And then next, what if you go ahead and produce out here at unit number 70? Then when we read up, what can we say? You lost that much money on unit number 70. Cost was greater than revenue. And you lost money on all the units before that when you went past 61. So if you go past unit number 60 out to unit number 70, all of this represents, the shaded area represents, lost profit caused by what? Overproduction. You're producing too many. So bottom line is, find where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue. I call that point alpha. Alpha tells us quantity, and that tells us how much to produce. We're going to use that rule from now on. We're going to find point alpha on every graph from now on, okay? That's the beginning of looking at this perfectly competitive firm and how they're going to behave.